Shalom, happy Sabbath, most high in Christ bless. Uh, my name is Captain Shem, and to my left, Officer Mikael. And we're coming out of IUIC New Orleans, and this is another uh, section of 15 minutes with the captains, all right? And this is a part two series of diet and health. Again, a part two of diet and health. I want to start off by, first of all, we're giving all praises to the Most High. Give me the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 12. Because you could have, you could be the healthiest eater. You can live on the farm, eat everything organic, and be perfect with your diet, but you're an adulterer, you're a liar, you're a stealer, you're a slander, you're a backbiter, okay, you are, you are a uh, pedophile. <laughs> you're not, listen, you got to have a problem, God. Read that. This is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, and verse 12. Come on. For it was neither herb nor mollifying plaster. Stop. So herbs. You got various herbs that can heal you. Herbs and roots. Many type of herbs that are for your health. Read on. That restored them to health. Right. Because a lot of times we might think that if we just eat healthy and have herbs and ginger tea and all these different things, turmeric, we have all these different excellent remedies that God does provide for us. But we back at the ranch, we are beating the crap out of our wives, okay? We are um, lying. We're breaking the Sabbath willingly, okay? We're doing things that we ought not to do. Now, obviously, if you work and you're trying to get the... We understand that's, that's between you and the Lord. But I'm saying, they call you and, hey, Joe, we got overtime on, 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 on the Sabbath. And you're like, yes, when you could have said no, all right? So read it again. For there was neither herb nor mollifying plaster that restored them to health. Come on. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. So the word of God heals us all things. So we got to keep his commandments. However, the word is also, he gives us sub laws on how to eat and how to keep our health. So in, can I preface this class with we have to be righteous. We have to keep the commandments. We have to honor the high holy days. We have to keep the Passover. We have to remember the day of Nicanor, Nicanor, excuse me. We have to do these different things to make, to, to make us align with God. By the way, day of Nicanor is coming up tomorrow evening. It's not a Sabbath, but we're going to remember it, all right? Just for you brothers and sisters who might not understand that. So let's get the book of, uh, did you read everything on that? Yes, sir. Give me the book of Sirach 30, verse 25. So last topic we had on 15 minutes with the captains we went into all about the herbs and fruits and vegetables that our forefathers grew even in captivity they were still gardeners they had vineyards and they had things that they were self-sufficient and we need to go back to that today's a part two we're going to revisit that and show you the benefits if we grow our own food and we show you the scriptures how we can change our health and our diet. Okay, read. This is the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30 and verse 25. Let's follow along, y'all. Come on. A cheerful and good heart will have care of his diet. Read it again. I'm sorry. I wanted you to read that first part again. A cheerful and good heart. Stop. A cheerful and good heart. Well, what? Will have care of his meat and diet. So it says that a cheerful and man of good heart will have a care, meaning he will worry about putting bad things in his body of his meat. Now, meat is also talking about can be anything you eat, right? It's not just venison and bison and, and, and cow or beef. Okay, it's talking about everything you put in your body. And your diet is the whole way that you eat, right? So it's very important that we as Israelites we learn to have a care. Read it again. A cheerful and good heart. Cheerful and good heart. Will have a care. A what? Will have a care. You know what it means to have a care? If you care for your own diet and meat that goes in your body, wouldn't you care for your wives? Wouldn't you care for your children? So a lot of it starts with us men. We set the, the pace for the nation of Israel. So a lot of us men were busy and a lot of us eat horribly, okay? So today's class, I want to inspire you, brothers. Let's change our health. Why? Because we're going to have to. As things get worse, 
we're going to need to grow our own food grow our own fruits and our vegetables and some of us are going to raise our own livestock which we will butcher and eat eggs from our various hens all right read it again one more time the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 30, and verse 25. Come on. A cheerful and good heart. Cheerful, good heart. Will have care of his meats and diet. Going to have a care of his meats and diet. He's going to care about what things get put in front of him. Now, right now, I'm right in the spirit. We're going to go right to the scripture. Get me the book of, yes, 31, verse 16. Sirach 30 and 31 are very important guides. Laws are guides. Sub-laws are guides. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 31 and verse 16. Remember the precept that a cheerful and good man will have a care for his meat and his diet. Right? Now watch this. See if you can get this. Read. Eat as it becometh a man. Eat as it becometh a man. Read on. Those things which are set before thee. See, a lot of you, you just missed that. And I'm, I'm going to read it again. Read, uh, read on though. The things which are set before thee, and devour not, lest thou be hated. Okay, now, I want us all to, you're reading at home, you're looking at that scripture, I want to see if you got the understanding out of that. Just look at it for a minute. Alright? Look at it for a minute. Read it to yourself. All right. Now we're going to show you. This is the importance of this. Read it again. Eat as it becometh a man. There's a way a man's supposed to eat. Why I said man. Read on. Those things which are set before thee. Read that last part again. Those things which are set before thee. One more again. Those things which are set before thee. Those things that are set before thee. What does that mean? As the man of my house... I will control what my wife puts on my plate. I will control what my wife gives to my children. I will control what my wife eats. Why? Because we wanted to eat healthy. Read it again. Eat has it become a man. So there's a way that a man is supposed to not eat. It tells you at the end. Read on. Those things which are set before thee. If I tell my wife, if I don't tell her anything, she just starts setting stuff before me. I didn't run my house. But when I go into the scriptures, I have to have a care of my diet. I have to understand, and there's more scriptures to come that's going to help you with this. That whatever's set before thee, if something, something is set before thee, people are serving you. That's the job. Many of our wives, they serve us. Some wives work, and sometimes the husband will make, make the meal every once in a while. But for the most part, it's the woman that serve, serves the husband. Now, there's some situations where there's single fathers, and I get that. That's a little different. And the father has to prepare the food until the most high blessing with a wife. Read it again. Eat as it becometh the man. As it becometh the man. Read on. Those things which are set before thee. So someone is setting something before thee. That means there's a plan in place. There has to be a curriculum or a plan with which you tell what is to set before you. I'll give you another example. If I go to a restaurant, my wife's not cooking for me, I control what is set before me. I control to choose to get a nice green salad, maybe with some chicken in it, besides that greasy fried garbage. Okay, that we grew up loving black America taught us to love. And, and America in general taught us to love. Gra feet, greasy, fried, terrible freaking foods. Okay? Alright, read it again. He has it become the man. He has become the man. Those things which are set before thee. Before thee, read on. And devour not. Man, are you pigging out? Okay, you yum yum yum, you devour like a wolf. Okay, read on. Least thou be hated. And everybody hate that one dude that sit there and just pig out all the time. It could be a skinny brother. It could be the brother 150 pounds soaking wet. Every time you see me banging out fried chicken fries, just insatiable. So the Bible tells us that we need to pay attention to what's set before. That was the key to that verse. Now, like Sirach 38 and 4 says, the Lord made medicines from the ground. Okay? We read before that the first fruits was fruits from the garden of Eden. The Lord brings it forth. So now, we have to fix ourselves. We have to fix ourselves. Leaders will fix themselves. Now, get me the book of uh, Sirach 
I think we covered that. Last couple of scriptures, I want to review something that's very important. Get me the book of Jeremiah 29, verse 5. I'm going to close out these two scriptures. Again, 15 minutes for the captains. I pray, the prayer is that, and what we're showing you is biblical. It's not my own imagination. It's biblical. You can fix your health. Now, if you're wicked as hell, you're breaking the Sabbath, you are a drunkard, you're a liar and a thief, and you eat all organic, you go, listen, the Lord is going to destroy you. But when we are righteous and we do the things the Lord said, we rehearse our righteous acts, and we apply His Word, and we're reading His Word. We're reading His Word. His Word heals you. So if you was a fried chicken eating, overweight brother or sister that just has high cholesterol, all type of things, you're about to become diabetes type 2. You can't go into this word. The Lord can help you. You just got to apply. Bishop Nathaniel has a new acronym. Well, he's been saying it for years, but it's, it's, it's a nice catchy. It's SPA. S-P-A. Study, pray, and apply. Let's deal with the A in SPA. Read. Jeremiah. Chapter 29 and verse 5. All you brothers are saying, I can't do that, man. I'm in captivity. Ah, man, Baruch 3 and 8, brother. Ah, I said, man, I'm just getting to work. I'm just getting by, brother. Read. Build ye houses. Come on. And dwell in them. Now, just in the sake of time, the Israelites, the prophet Jeremiah, they were in captivity. Look it and read it for yourself. Read. And plant garden. What? And plant gardens. So we're supposed to plant gardens. And out of the gardens come fruit trees. Okay, out of the gardens come vegetables, which you can eat and apply these scriptures and help your health. Because it said in Sirach 30, 25, a cheerful and good heart would have a care of his meat and diet. That's what the Bible says. Read on. And eat the fruit. Of them. Let's read it one more time. I might have jammed them up. Read it again. Build ye houses. Build houses. And dwell in them. And live in them houses. Come on. And plant gardens. Plant you some gardens. Planting. Remember in Genesis 2 it said that he made free for us. When you plant things, are you out there tending to it 24 hours a day? No, the most high got the minerals. He got the soil. He got the things. He's got the, the whole cycle of the sun. He's got the water. He's got the roots. God does that for you. Because they know their cycle. They know their course. Read. And eat the fruit of them. And then we're supposed to eat the fruit thereof. And guess what? We, if we see us as we, if I see him as me and he sees me as him, the extra I have that I grow in my garden, guess what's going? To my brother. To his family. To my other brother's family. To my sister's family. That's what a nation does. Read. Take ye wives. And we got sons and daughters. Right. Why did I go here? Because you as a father will teach your sons and your daughters what you learn. You're going to teach them how to plant crop. You're going to teach them how to deal with the soil. You're going to teach them what you learn how to eat healthy. And you're going to teach their sons and daughters. And they're going to teach their children. We can fix our health. We can go forward and fix our health. Because a lot of us, I'm 100% guilty of eating terribly. I admit it. And I had to change. In this last year and a half, I've changed. I've changed. Every day it's a choice. Okay? Uh, give me the last scripture. We're going to close out. 15 minutes with the cap. We'll probably go over a couple minutes. Y'all stay in the spirit, man. All right? Now more than ever, we need to take care of each other. Okay? So I 30 verse 25. All right? Remember that scripture. Uh, we're going to the last scripture. Uh, Ecclesiastes. Solomon. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2. In verse 4. Now, in the interest of time, King Solomon was a so-called black man, a brother from the tribe of Judah. And this brother had an assemblance of crops and gardens and things of that nature. And guess what? He fed his people with it. You think he just grew it just to look at it? Look at all the apples. No! The brother made sure Israel was taken care of. That's what we got to do. Now, yes, Solomon was in rulership. I get it. But Jeremiah and them was in captivity. So there's no excuse. Well, I can't do it because Solomon was in rulership. Well, guess what? The Lord is blessing us with a certain amount of liberties that we have to fix. That we can do what we can do in captivity, too. For a lot of you naysayers out there, read. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 4. Listen good. I made me great work. Solomon 
Made great works. This is not a 10 by 10 garden out in the back by the shed. Read it again. I made me great works. This is great works. Read. I built me houses. This brother built houses. You can read about that, read. I planted me vineyard. A vineyard is a, oftentimes we think about grapes, right? Vineyards is more than just grapes. He planted vineyards, plural. I said that before in the last video. Read on. I made me gardens. Gardens, plural. Come on. And orchards. And what? And orchards. Why the heck do you think he planted orchards? Because he knew from the time all the way down from Adam all the way down, the 12 tribes of Israel that came out of the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They knew the importance of growing their own food. They knew the importance of controlling and being self-sufficient. They understood that. They understood that in captivity as well. So what do you think we was doing when we, was, when we ruled in Europe? And the one during the corn season. You don't think we grew our own food during the dark ages? You don't think we was going across Africa? We was war with the Africans uh, when we fled from Jerusalem and, and, and subsequently all went to the fort. You don't think that we was growing our own food? Are you serious? We got examples right here. Okay, come on. And I planted trees in them of all kind of fruit. Man, this brother planted trees in the orchards, all kind of fruit. All kind of fruit. So what are we waiting for? That's my question. Read on. I made me pools of water. You know what pools of water are? That's an irrigation system. When you pull water, you can channel it. These brothers had an irrigation system. For all you naysayers and you, you negative uh, Nelsons out there. It's the best I can think of. Read. To water there with the wood that bringeth forth trees. So he had an irrigation system with pools of water that watered his orchards. Why? So he could feed the Israelites with fruits and vegetables. Okay, is that it on that? Yes, sir. So with that, this is going to conclude 15 minutes with the captains. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave you with this last statement. I pray you take this class seriously, especially you men. It starts with men. We're the leaders of the nation of Israel. Okay, we need to encourage, if you're a single brother, make better choices. If you're a, sing, if you're a single sister, listen, pray to the Lord for a husband, and you make sure you put the stuff before your children that's healthy. You understand that? You men change the tone of your house. Change the climate of your house. When you go to a restaurant, let's change the climate. Meditate on the scriptures that we gave you. The Bible gave you understanding. We just brought it out. So with that, this is Captain Shim. IUIC New Orleans. Like Bishop Nathaniel said, spot, study, pray, and most importantly, apply, brothers and sisters. With that, I'm Captain Shem. Most high in Christ bless. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us.
more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.